GCSE Maths Paper 1. Are you ready? I can't tell you that, but what I can tell you is that by the end of this video, you are going to be ready to attempt that paper, get the highest possible marks you can get, because we are about to go through what you should be doing the day before the exam to put yourself in the best position to be able to answer as many of the questions accurately and correctly as you possibly can what you should be focusing your revision on. So we're gonna go through some of the most frequently forgotten and under-revised topics that examiners' reports have consistently pointed out that students just don't do very well in. So you are not going to fall into those traps. And we're also going to go through some tips for the morning of the exam and during the exam itself to make sure that even if you do come across a question, which you know by the time you revise all of these specific topics that I'm about to tell you about, you're probably not, but if you do come across a question that you cannot answer, then we're gonna go through what you should be doing to make sure that you still pick up marks anyway and checking that you do not lose any easy marks. You won't be making any silly mistakes because we're going to go through common silly mistakes as well. That is a lot of stuff, so let's just get straight to it. First of all, the day before the exam, what should you be doing? Well, obviously you want to be focusing on questions. You want to be getting through as many practice questions as you can because the more that you expose yourself to past paper style questions in maths, the easier it is for you to tackle the questions in the exam paper. The reason being is that year on year, they don't really change the questions. They change the numbers, they change the context, but the underlying principles that they are testing is the same year after year after year. So if you still have any past papers that you have not completed for this particular maths GCSE paper one, please tell me that you are going to do those past papers on this day. And a lot of the time it's very useful, even if you haven't left any right till the end and you've completed them all, still go back and do a couple of them. But obviously you're not going to have time to go through every single past paper or every single past paper question that exists. That's not going to happen. So the first thing I want you to do is think to yourself, okay, do I know whether there are any topic areas that I struggle in? Do I know that, for example, I always get geometry questions wrong, then you want to focus on geometry. If you are sat there thinking, I'm not really sure what I'm not good at, that's totally fine. I never really knew it would only be when it comes up and then I go, oh, I'm not very good at that, am I? But I wouldn't be able to think of it off the top of my head. So what I have done is I have looked through the examiner's reports and past papers for Edexcel, OCR and AQA GCSE Maths Paper 1. And I've had a look at some of the most commonly mistaken topics and I'm going to go through them now because these are the things that you should really be checking that you understand. The first thing we have negative numbers and bid mass. Please please, please just know the rules about two negatives make a plus. Know how bid mass or bod mass depending on what you call it works because that'll come up in the first couple of questions of the paper consistently. Then ensure that you remember dividing fractions. If you have not seen the video that goes like keep, change, flip, yeah, that's the action. Everybody's gonna know how we're dividing fractions. If you've never seen that video, please go and watch that video because that is ingrained in my brain. I am now 19 at university and I probably watched that for the first time when I was 11 and I still, I still use that every time I need to divide fractions, which probably tells you a lot about my mathematical ability, but you know, I still got a grade nine and basically 100% of my math GCSE, so I do know what I'm talking about, but make sure that you keep the keep, change, flip in your head for when you're dividing fractions. Then ensure that you read questions fully so that you understand the rounding or the estimation that you need to use. If it says round to one significant figure, make sure that you know if your decimal point is going to be above the five, you round, it, you round it up. If it is below, you round it down. But if it says truncate, you don't do any rounding. Too many people, that is consistently coming up in examiner's reports where they say in a question you want to be truncating your answer that everyone rounds. Don't mess up rounding and truncating. Next thing, know your angle rules. So a lot of the time in geometric questions, it'll feel very, very difficult because you're not remembering certain rules. So make sure you know about corresponding angles, make sure you know even things as basic as angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Make sure these are at the forefront of your brain because a lot of the time when you get presented with a tricky geometric question, it can be really hard to apply these basic ideas in practice unless they are in your brain and you've actually looked at them the day before. So I would look over all of your angle rules the day before your exam with priority. Now, make sure that you are able to understand graphs. So you can look at a histogram and you know what it says. You can look at a line graph or a scatter plot and actually understand what it is trying to get you to do. And on that note, box plots. Box plots come up every year, pretty much. And every time in the examiner's reports, they will say, students consistently got these wrong. Make sure you understand box plots. Right now, pause the video and go and look and make sure you can label and understand and interpret a box plot. 
Okay, now, now that you're back and you have understood your box plots, the last thing that I really want to focus in on is units. Make sure you know your units and always read the question and look out for what units specifically they are asking you to actually answer in. Because a lot of the time they will give you um, data in the question, but then actually ask for your answer in different units. And that is such a sneaky way, but they put it in there to separate students, you know, separate grade seven students from grade nine students. But even if you're working at a grade five, if you can pick up on these sneaky things, you're going to be bumped up towards an eight. That is how impactful they can be. So that is verging into the territory of tips for the exam itself. We're going to get onto a lot more of them in just a moment. But those are the topics that you should be focusing your revision on. And the best places that I've found during my GCSE revision to actually get any information from, I've got a nice little list over here. So Corbett Maths. Corbett Maths is brilliant. If you have been doing their five a day, that is really good. I really enjoyed doing them before my GCSE. If you haven't, loads of questions organized by topic. There's also Dr. Frost Maths, which has a lot of interactive questions. But if you just want to blitz through lots of questions and be able to filter by certain subjects, certain topic areas, Physics and Maths Tutor and Coconito are going to be your best friends for tomorrow. Because genuinely, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that you spend multiple hours tomorrow just doing maths questions. As painful as it is, you're going to feel very relieved when in the exam you come across a question that is almost identical to a question that you just attempted the previous day and pretty much know the mark scheme of off by heart. Now in the evening before the exam, I want you to do one past paper. This is going to be a representative past paper. Now, if you do this past paper and you're thinking, great, I just got the grade that I'm aiming for tomorrow. That is incredible. Well done you. If, however, you don't get the grade that you are aiming for in the exam the next day. Do not panic, do not lose hope, because that is exactly why we've done this past paper. Because what you're going to be able to do is you're then going to go back through this paper and you are going to identify exactly what the causes of concern were for the questions that you got incorrect or for the questions that you couldn't attempt. What I want you to do is genuinely think what is the topic being tested here? Because too many students will just look to the mark scheme, see a model answer and replicate it and go, okay, I'd be able to do that in an exam. Spoiler alert, you won't be able to do that in the exam. What you actually need to do is think, okay, I got this question wrong. Why did I get it wrong? Is it because I didn't understand something to do with bit mass? I put something in the wrong way. Okay, then you're going to take that understanding and you're going to make sure that you actually go away and learn it. And the way you're going to go away and learn it is you're going to go onto Physics and Maths Tutor, or you're going to go onto Cognito or Corbett Maths, and you're going to type in bid maths exam questions for GCSE. You'll be able to filter it, and you'll be able to find them. And you're just going to practice at least five of those questions. So you're not just reading through a textbook and going, oh yeah, I'll remember that. Because you won't remember that. You're doing it in practice. And practicing is exactly how you're going to be tested in the exam so that if a question similar to that does come up, you are going to be able to do it correctly. Similarly, you know, it might have been that you forgot what a reciprocal was. You know, one over a number is it's reciprocal. OK, go away, do some questions on reciprocals. You'll be able to find them. And that is why we're doing a past paper the night before so that you can be confident going in the next day that either you're already working at the grade you want to get or that you've put in the exact work that you need to be putting in to get that grade that you want. From that past paper, what I want you to do as well is write a little bit of a cheat sheet. And I want you to have been doing this throughout the entirety of the day as you're revising these pressing topics that I've told you about that a lot of students get wrong. I want you to write a cheat sheet. Whenever you get a question incorrect, think, okay, what was it? What, where was the break in my chain of reasoning in my ability to logically think through this problem that led me to getting it wrong? Was it that you read the question incorrectly? Was it that you didn't understand the units that you had to give your answer in? Was it that you didn't round correctly? Or was it more fundamental? Was it something like you forgot about a certain equation or you made a mental mistake in your calculations? Write it down on your cheat sheet. And then this cheat sheet, you're going to look at within 10 minutes before you walk into your exam room. So if your exam room's at school, you're going to take this cheat sheet with you to school and you're just gonna leave it outside the exam room. Doing that is going to put those things that you were getting wrong the day before the exam right into the forefront of your brain. So even if they're not in your long-term memory, even if in three, four weeks you aren't going to be able to get questions on these topics right, you are going to be able to get them right in the exam that you are going to be sitting in 10 minutes time because those concepts are going to be right in the front of your brain. And something that I would really advise you to do, I did this a lot. So there'd be certain equations that you'd need for non-calculator maths GCSE that I would forget a lot. What I would do is before an exam, I would write down those calculations or those equations or those concepts or definitions, whatever they were, on my cheat sheet. 
And right before I go into the exam, I'm going to be looking at this cheat sheet. I'm going to commit them to memory. I'll just be reciting them. I'll be sitting in the queue. I'll be reciting them. I'll be walking in. I'll be like reciting them in my head. As soon as the examiner says, you may begin, pick up my pencil and I will write those equations on the front of my exam paper. And then I don't need to think about them and I'm not stressing, but I know that they are there should I need to use them and I'm not going to forget them. That is such a simple but super, super effective way to one, take off a bit of stress, but two, to give yourself a literal cheat sheet that you can literally bring into the exam with you because it's in your head. In the exam itself, what should you be doing? First of all, do try to stick to the one mark a minute rule because the marginal gains of you focusing on the next question rather than fretting on the question that you're trying to do but can't really think straight and can't get the correct answer to, they're going to be so much more significant. So you want to be moving on. Don't spend too much time on one question. You can always come back to it at the end. So spend roughly a mark a minute, but ensure you leave five to 10 minutes to check. I used to hate checking. Genuinely, I hated checking so, so much. I, for the longest time, would not check anything because I just thought it was boring. And I was like, oh, I finished. I just want to sit here. No, please go through and check. You only have one opportunity to complete your Maths GCSE paper one. So checking is not the end of the world. It might be boring, but it's going to be beneficial to you. Check for sign errors. Make sure that, you know, two minuses make a plus. Make sure you've copied down the numbers from the question correctly. And that being said, every time you turn to a new question, put your pencil down, read the question, then pick your pencil up, read it again, highlight the numbers. And if you have to copy numbers down, for example, you know, you're given a bunch of numbers in the question and you've got to do some stuff with them to make get your answer. Make sure you're copying them down correctly because the amount of times that I've copied down a number slightly incorrectly, I've moved a decimal point where it shouldn't be. I would put a plus instead of a minus. That is why you're checking. That is why you're going through at the end. For wordy questions, particularly data interpretation, OCR and Edexcel in particular want detailed answers. They want you to structure them logically. So make sure you're writing down every single step of your working out. And that applies to the more mathsy questions as well every single, even if it is the most ridiculous thing, you're doing one plus one, write it down because you can still get credited. Even if you get something wrong, you're still going to be credited because you have written down everything and you're going to be able to get error carried forward. If you don't do that, you cannot get error carried forward. It's as simple as that. You must write down everything that you possibly can and do not leave blank spaces. If you can't think what to do, literally just play around with the numbers in the question for a couple of minutes. Writing something down is always better than writing nothing down. In a maths exam, the most crucial thing that you need to understand is that 80% of what you are doing is you actually trying to figure out what the question is asking you to do. You have the tools. You've sat in maths class. You've done your maths revision. You understand how numbers work. You just need to actually decipher what the question genuinely wants you to do because it is all too easy, particularly in a non-calculator paper, for you to look at a question, assume what it's asking you to do, complete that, but then that not actually be what is going to be rewarded on the mark scheme. So the way that you get around that is, like I say, reading the question multiple times, underlining the key terms, but it is also being really, really focused. It is also making sure that you have easy access in your mind to the key principles, the key ideas that can actually be tested in this test. And that is where your preparation the day before, looking at all of these topics actually comes in. And that is why it is so important to have a cheat sheet that you can look at before the exam, so that if you know that there are certain ideas, certain concepts that you consistently get wrong, you're going to be able to look at them right before you get in there and they're going to be in the forefront of your mind and you are going to be ready to apply them. Those are my wealth of tips for your maths GCSE paper one. Good luck. I purposefully did this video a day earlier than the actual exam itself. So we've got an entire day of preparation and an entire day of asking questions. If you have any questions about maths GCSE at all, do let them me know in the comments and I'll be responding to all of them across the course of the day. A massive good luck once again in your maths GCSE paper one you're going to smash it. And I will see you in the next video as I make more of these videos throughout GCSE season. So if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to, because you're not going to want to miss out when I do math paper two, when I have a look at English language, English literature paper two. See you then.